Brought to you by Excel, makers of inexpensive and high quality Windows and Android tablets. Great gadgets for less. Hey everybody, it's Lon Cyber at CES 2015 and I am wearing, uh, what are these called, the AR? They're, they're our smart glasses, smart the glasses. consumer platform. And I'm, ODG. and I'm here with Nima from OT, ODG, and what these are, so we've seen other examples of, you know, uh, the virtual reality from Oculus and others, but there's a, a whole new segment of uh, augmented reality where you put a screen in front of your face. We all, have, you know, looked at the Google Glass and whatnot. Now, I've been wearing these and trying these out here at the booth. This is a very hard product to demonstrate on video, but I can say that the uh, the image quality is excellent, and what it does is it puts like a, how, how big of a screen would you say? It's it, about 65 inches at 10 feet away. So it puts this nice big 65 inch screen. I was looking out in the sunlight. I could see I could see it in pretty much all light. You can put darker shades up if you want some privacy. And uh, the immediate thing that was that, that I think might be useful is when you're on a plane, you can actually get a nice big screen, uh, connect Bluetooth to these, and uh, work on a document or something because these are running Android, right? This is a full. full Android. It's a full Android, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you're an Android developer and know how to develop on an Android tablet, you could develop on our system. And so you could do your email, all your standard Android apps. Yeah, that that system is a Snapdragon 805 quad core 2.7 gigahertz processor. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, three-axis gyro, mag accelerometer, anything your phone has that has minus the cellular modem. We did some augmented reality experiments, and it's very fast and responsive. So, I mean, certainly these are a little bit bigger than maybe normal sunglasses are, but I think there certainly could be some uses on, you know, consumer uses and certainly small business uses as well. So uh, let's step through the hardware, though, because it's going to be impossible to show how good the image is on camera, but I can say, trust me, I looked at them. They look great. So uh, what I like about this right off the bat is that we do have that Android integration. You don't need a phone to use this at all, right? Yep, it's full standalone. No phone doesn't need to be tethered. Uh, if you have Wi-Fi, you could connect to it, watch Netflix. Netflix, even get your Uber if you want right off of the device. It's pretty cool. So anything really an Android device can do, it'll, this will do. Absolutely. This is a prototype we should mention. So yeah, the it's, a, it's a pre production. We will be launching in 2015, uh, sub $1,000. Um, but yeah, it's a pre production unit. The form factor can change, um, the design can slightly change, but yes. So what do you envision consumers doing with this? Are you trying to work with maybe some enthusiasts to try to find uses that might be useful? Yeah, great point. CES has two purposes for us. One, we're telling the world we exist. It's six years, over $60 million invested in Headworn. First time we're really publicly talking about it. And second is we want the Android community to know we also exist and developers. Because the, the hardware is a barrier to entry, but it's the software that will make it magical. So if we have a whole developers kit and we have a developers uh, program which people can sign up for and actually develop for our product. So let's step through the hardware real quick. Some of the little, you know, some of the uh, physical features here. The lenses just like pop off really easily, right? Absolutely. I'm going to wear them real quick and demonstrate. So the lenses are magnetic. They actually just pop right off and they snap right back in, just like that. Um, ear horns are adjustable, so you could actually remove the ear horns and put them in for different head sizes. Same thing on the nose bridge. Um, the displays are full see-through. So let me actually remove the lenses. So depending on the type of lens you want. You can make them fully clear and see my eyes. It's pretty bad with that light blasting, but you but can see the eyes. We can make right, we're having a conversation. So I could be uh, uh, like, like texting. So this is going to be bad when my daughter becomes a teenager when she wants to text and not listen to dad. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so she can, she can look at me and still text, I guess. And, and I think that's what's neat about these is that when I tried Google Glass, I had to look up. Um, these you don't look up, you look straight ahead. Yeah, great point. So the head-worn space is huge. Google Glass and Oculus are on the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Google Glass is monocle, it's off to the side, it's out of the way, but it's uh, smaller and it's mobile. On the other end is Oculus, very immersive. I'm a gamer, I love the product, right? But you can't see through it. You get lost in the world, but it's not mobile. Our device is right in between them. It's immersive, but see-through, and it's very mobile. Now, they're, they're not as small as a pair of sunglasses might be, um, but you're really not looking at this as a lifestyle device you're going to wear around 24-7. This is something different, right? Correct. It's very similar to a tablet. It's a device that once you need it, you wear it, you interact with it, and then you can put it away. Um, the form factor over time obviously will shrink. It's changed and evolve. But it's, uh, it's, we, see it, we see it as a pro productivity tool. It's something that a user, you know, I want to watch a movie. I'm sitting on a train. I pull it out. I watch my movie. I'm in a new area like New York, and I don't know my way around. I put them on and navigates me where I need to go. Right? Um, I'm interacting in a business conference, and we want to look at a new schematic and brings up an augmented reality chart that people interact with, but the device isn't really there. So that's the way we vision this. 
it looks really cool. So uh, how long is the battery life on this? Because I'm sure if you're walking around with it all day, you're going to want your, your uh, smart glasses to be responsive to that. Uh, what, what do you expect for battery life? Yeah, absolutely. So it's the equivalent battery life of a high-end tablet. And in some ways, our system's a lot a lot more efficient because the displays are so close to your eye, you don't need as much light to shine into them. And it's sunlight readable, all right? I'm not competing my displays and competing with the sun. You don't need a backlight in that case. You don't need a backlight or anything. So our system's designed to be very efficient. About a full stage use with typical Android uh, tablet type of use. Um, if you do high-end augmented reality with all the radios on and stuff, it's a couple hours. But if you're just watching movies, doing email, browsing, you have Oh, about five, six, seven hours use. What kind of apps do you think it's going to launch with? Obviously, you're going to want to have things that are really uh, designed for this AR interface. I guess you're putting on your own layer on top of Android to make this a usable feature. Um, so what kind of apps are you looking at making it? Yeah, great point. Android's not designed for see-through, right? And our system, black, is see-through. Android's not designed for dual displays, right? Um, ours has dual displays. And if I'm biking and I have a little map navigation, I don't want my Angry Birds pop up you know, coming from my face. So we've put our own skin on top of Android called Reticle OS and takes account what a head Warn operation system should do. Um, so it's it's fairly you know any app that you can put on Android you can put on this but enhance it like Google Google Street View right? Why do you need to see the street when you're actually on the street? All you need is the virtual arrow to show you where you need to go. Right. So but you could oh I see what you're saying right. So you could you could uh, have the Google Map project. Uh, you just turn your head and and you still see the reality around you and the screen. So you can almost choose which thing you want to focus on in your exactly. Eyes. It fuses uh, the digital world and the real world together, and that's the beauty of augmented reality, right? Right. Absolutely. And I think what I, what I liked is just how fast and responsive the processor is. When you are turning your head, it's it's not this delayed thing. It really feels pretty nice. So uh, you control it on the top there. So there's a little capacitive switch. There's a, a optical trackpad that allows you to select. There's Android buttons on the bottom, back in menu, and power. There's magnetic earbuds, so earbuds co connect to this, and you can see it. Actually, I have a kit here. I can show your your fans. So this is a full kit that launched with the products. So earbuds, magnetic charging cable, variety of different shades. There's a ring controller, so this is really cool. It sits on your ring. It actually tracks motion in air, and it has an optical trackpad and uh, the Android buttons on it as well. Very cool. Now you do more than just the consumer stuff. Obviously, this is the the consumer version of more commercial government applications. So you, you, this is something that you've been doing for a long time, right? Correct. Uh, we've been working uh, on Headworn for over six years in this uh, method. About sixty million dollars invested in it. Um, we have launched a product called the R6 and the R6S, targeted to government and industry. It's around five thousand dollars. It's very robust. It's designed to you know use in the dirt and the sand and outside. Uh, the consumer version will launch in 2015 for sub a thousand dollars. Excellent. So it's coming soon. Yeah. Under a thousand bucks. I think you know some people seeing this might find a really good use for this, especially if they want to have a screen uh, that they're not really tethered to necessarily, right? So pretty cool. Well, thank you, Nina, Nima, for uh, showing us the product today. I, I'm really impressed with the. The display quality and uh, look forward to uh, seeing how things develop. Appreciate it.